Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. My name's Anna Pirelli. The comments that you see here are my views, beliefs, opinions, and sometimes they are not even my fully formed views, beliefs, and opinions. However, they are my understandings. Please do retain an open mind and reflect on any of the content and your comfort levels. If your views differ, please feel free to leave a comment. Also remember, it is possible to disagree in respectful ways. My way is not necessarily your way and vice versa. You might also find that some of the content on this playlist um, in regard to spiritual or universal laws, it resonates with you, meaning it feels right to you, while other laws may not feel right or they may not feel comfortable. If this is the case, the information is either not right for you or it is not right for you right now, and it might never be right for you at any given time. It really doesn't matter. As an earthy and practical person, I can put my hand up with all honesty and say that I have at different times had the same feelings about some of the content in here. And with some of them, I still have a level of scepticism uh, within my viewpoints, but I choose to retain an open mind about the things that I don't fully understand for a few reasons. Firstly, because I believe it would be supreme arrogance to think that we all know all of the answers while we have a body. Um, and because what is right for one of us is not necessarily right or suitable for all of us and I choose to respect the differences. Please do leave your uh, opinions, beliefs, uh, feel free to argue the points in a respectful way um, with any of the content on the slides and even my interpretations and if you feel that you can add clarity around some of the content we would all love to see it. Thank you. For now though let's explore the laws. All creation is governed by law. The principles that operate in the outer universe, discoverable by scientists, are called natural laws. But there are subtler laws that rule the hidden spiritual planes and the inner realm of consciousness. Contained within these laws, or conditions, is the true nature of matter. Knowledge of these laws has an effect upon the mental urges. Mind is the builder. Stay in full mindfulness of the application of universal law as related to self and to others, and know that in love all life is given, in love all things move. In giving one attains, in giving one acquires, in giving, love becomes the fulfillment of desire, guided and directed in the ways that bring the more perfect knowledge of self as related to the universal, all-powerful, all-guiding all divine influence in life. Love is life. When we go back, merge with the God Source, in some infinitesimal but profound way, we expand the mind of God. Our higher self always points the best and most perfect way and it is ours to listen and choose or reject what we hear. It does not blame, but patiently tries again to show the perfect way, the loving way. All of creation pushes forth. We are ever becoming. Identity ever remains. Universal Law Number 99, The Law of Time. The only moment we have is now. This is where we create. What we have done is done, and that moment in history exists only as a record or energy trace in time and space. The consequences of past actions are atoned through karma and can be rewritten to a degree. The future only ever happens in and from the present tense and is built of today's thoughts, dressed by emotion and driven by action. Activity is the key. Third dimension living has more rigid structure of time than fourth dimension existence. There are those who can slip into no time, but these are people who have raised their personal vibration, demonstrating many virtues dispensed a great deal of karma and much killing of the ego, and accessed the information to create the ability. Third dimension linear time was created for those living under this veil of forgetfulness to center in the moment and perceive a sense of order without the remembrance of burdens of past lives. Okay, so this is another one of those that I look out, I have a big sign, I think, oh my God, here we go again. All right, I would be very surprised Let's unpack it bit by bit. I would be very surprised if many of us were not aware of the importance of 
the now and the living in the now because when we're stuck in the good old yesterday it has the capacity to impact on it has the capacity will forget the capacity it definitely will impact upon our capacity to enjoy the present moment and it also impacts or impedes our ability to seize opportunities that present right now as part of enhancing our future you know because we have to be able to see opportunities to grab hold of them um, so from an energetic perspective i get and understand and i'm sure you will as well that we all experience karma either negative or positive based upon our actions and these could be the actions that we do today or they could be yesterday they could be big karmic responses they could be small ones right I do also understand that in many instances, as we live out our days, we are addressing um, the consequences of our actions and it could be living through the karma of some really poor choices that may have happened a few decades ago. Um, other times, I'm just making, I put a couple of notes here, other times when we're talking about working through karma, it's actually uh, often, you know, we may have hurt somebody either deliberately or inadvertently um, and it could be a physical spiritual or psychological injury so I understand that that makes sense to me that um, yes we incur karma but where it says to a sense it can be rewritten that's a little bit that I struggle a bit with and I'm not sure about you um, I'm not sure that we can eradicate the past but that if we take actions in the present moment when there, we might be able to get um, a bit more balance there, you know, redress, if you like. We might be able to resolve some of the karmic consequences. Um, for instance, if it might be karma that we've got to work through in a, previ in a previous, in a future life, we might be able to work through that in the present life and sort of clear the slate, if you like, for any future lives. Um, and a prime example of this, and if you've been a victim of crime, you might find this one a bit problematic. So fair warning so let's say that somebody on the earth plane has committed a crime um, and then they're punished and they're held accountable and they go into prison and all the rest of it they're actually getting karmic redress through the imprisonment if you like I know that people turn around and say well I'm fairly confident I shouldn't say no I'm fairly confident there's going to be a section of the community that will say but justice um, is not always served through the prison. Um, the court system may fail to penalise the people appropriately or whatever. Uh, but in my experience, having worked in human services, just because the person's out of prison doesn't mean that they are not living by the consequences of their poor choices before they went to jail. It can often be very, very difficult for them to rebuild their lives as positive citizen, citizens upon release because they definitely... They definitely do have a lot of barriers, but I'm not going to go into that right now as well. So anyway, I also understand with this that, or with the law that they've put up here, that unless an idea is accompanied by an action or activity, then it remains purely a thought or an idea. A manifestation must include an action or an activity, and that can be basic, you know, based on my understanding and I'm saying I'm based on my experiences this can be through the process of doing an invocation if somebody's going to do a vision board well that's helping them to maintain a visualization it's also an action it's a focus of intent it's a giving a purpose to this idea and it is putting it into action um, the other thing is to it reminds them on a daily basis to create this space for whatever it is to that they're trying to manifest for them to be able to receive that um, gift or blessing that they're asking for I may have shared this story before but I'm going to share it again because not everybody reads all the video or reads watches all the videos that I put up um, but anyway in regard to the passage about the third dimensional having more structure than the fourth dimension I think we need to clearly outline here or articulate that when we talk about third dimension we're talking about the physical body stuff when we talk about fourth dimension we're talking about soul stuff okay the spirit so while I am not going to be able to explain on the level of being a phys uh, what is it a physics or scientist because that's outside of my area of expertise how I delivered this 
understanding to my son when he was very small was, uh, in fact, actually, I think I told all the children it. I said that when we come here to the earth plane, we have a physical body and the physical body has got weight to it. It's got a structure. And when we communicate, we do so through using our voice box. We've got a mouth and hands. We make gestures. We have verbal and non-verbal communication. But once the soul leaves the body, it no longer has a body. It's not restricted. It can be anywhere at any time. It is free. It's liberated. Um, and the way it communicates is no longer through a voice box. So the way we hear messages or have a conversation with spirit, if you like, is through physical sensations. Um, but I say, but here, remember I'm speaking to a child. It's actually through the clairs, right? So when we talk about physical sensations and being able to feel touch from spirit, we're talking about clairsentience, okay? So it is called a phenomena from what I know. So yes, within that perspective, it does make sense to me where the law states that the fourth dimension, the soul space, is less structured and rigid than the earth plane. And I would imagine you probably would agree with that. However, if you don't, please leave a comment. As I say, always uh, appreciate any comments. Um, but then the business, this bit kind of throws me off a bit. It might be the wording of it, right? Okay, so the idea that people can slip into no time um, because they've raised their personal vibration and then they put in this business of demonstrating many virtues and dispensed a great deal of karma and much killing of the ego as being the grounds for a be able to do what kind of sounds a bit like time travel. Um, that bit kind of throws me off, okay, because... Mm. Look, I, I do understand parts of this, so it might be to do with words and language and that business of trying to describe something that um, cannot be described. When we thought, talk about third dimension time, we're talking about linear time, the timeline, um, and there's that living under the veil of forgetfulness as part of, part of being in the centre, in the moment, and having that whole idea of a sense of order, without remembering the burdens of past lives. I mean, that absolutely makes sense. If you're living in the here and now, right now today, do you really need to know everything that happened in your past lives? I actually do have an answer for that because sometimes we do need to know. So where I was going with the business of no time, um, I'm not sure that that's a really good description, like I said, but I do understand that it is possible for us to go back and do past lives, to retrieve past life memory, um, and I understand that that's part of doing the healing process. I'm not sure, though, that people need to be anything special to do this stuff. I think the difference is that if people are going to do this past life reclaiming, that they need to be able to uh, differentiate between fact and fabrications of their mind or even delusions. Um, I haven't done this many years or for many years because just to put this into perspective, I felt that I needed to understand the root cause of what was basically a blood phobia. I just couldn't cope with blood at all. The sight of blood would just, um, you know, well, make me faint, make me faint, especially if it was mine, I'd go out for the count. Um, and so there was no logical, rational reason as to why I had this phobia of blood. So I ended up doing, um, you know, because you state your purpose and intent before you do any form of activity. And I thought, well, I want to find the core issue for this so that I can actually heal it because it was actually becoming problematic, um, interrupting my parenting, shall we say, because I had very active children. There was a few times where they sustained a couple of blood injuries because they didn't listen to what their mother said. And um, I had to develop a strategy of providing first aid where I wasn't exposed to blood, but let's not go there. Anyway, what I did was I actually did um, a past life Thing to establish it and I got my answers and another time yeah so there's been two occasions I'm not going to go too far into it but I will say that there was a friend of mine she once she heard about my finding the answer to the situation with the blood and being able to release and heal that she decided to address her phobia of heights and she was able to turn around and tell me some of the visions that she had that were past life where she actually fell 
from a mast apparently she saw herself on a sailing ship falling and dying so she was then able to heal her fear of heights okay so i do understand that there is from that perspective no sense of structured time or we're not locked into time and i know it sounds really out there if people haven't looked into this kind of stuff but i of course you've only got my word when i tell you these stories um, unless somebody puts their hand up and goes yep yep that was me and i'm not going to ask this person to do that anyway out of part of her confidentiality respect for her but one of uh, her past life recalls that she had because she did it a couple of times she came back and she said to me that we had known each other in a past life and she actually no offense meant to anybody here please keep an open mind till you get to the end of the story what she saw was um, both of us in what she would have called egyptian attire um she said it looked like we were in egypt and we we're actually stealing a boat if you don't mind um which says a lot about us you've got to have a really good sense of humor anyway she said um she saw us stealing a boat she said but the weirdest thing was that the boat was on wheels and um, she was killed because we got caught. She said, we didn't even get away with it. She said, we weren't even good thieves. She said, because we got busted. She said, and she said, it was so bizarre. She said, because in this vision that I had, she said, it looked like there was a bunch of Vikings came out after us. And she said, and we were running. We abandoned the idea apparently in her vision of, of stealing this ship. She said, because we were too busy running from the Vikings. But unfortunately for her in her vision, she lost a balance and slipped under the wheels. And now, of course, we're going back many years. Everybody's probably seen the show Vikings now and that kind of stuff and realized that um, they had some interesting habits. But back at the time we were having this conversation, which I think was probably about 2001, maybe 2002, we didn't know anything about Vikings. We didn't understand the trade routes or that they actually did go into Egypt. These are things that we learned much later on that actually, to some extent, validates her vision. Yes, the Vikings did go into Egypt. Yes, they did um, transport their boats over land when there was no water and they did put them on wheels, which is incredibly fascinating. So anyway, that was what she saw. But anyway, that gave us a great sense of humour and that's just an interesting story to tell you as I go through this. I think probably the only thing I could say about this with the law of time is, you know, if we're going into the future, if we're looking at future stuff, that's the predictions. And when it's futuristic, it's still in development and it's not always in concrete. So um, future plans can change, okay? But when it comes to the past stuff, can we go back there and rewrite the past, whether it's physical life or past life? I'm not sure that we can. I just don't understand that. Maybe something has been lost in translation or maybe, I don't know. But either way, the other thing that I say is that uh, when it comes to past life, you must actually, I shouldn't say you must, I think we all must be mindful that it's very easy to manipulate our thoughts um, because I remember making a joke many years ago that goodness me there's a lot of people that were Cleopatra in a past life or Mark Anthony or a lot of people that were um, you know Native American warriors or some famous person you know in a previous existence and I think if you start finding yourself as being this famous person you need to really take a good look and ask yourself really you know i'm not so sure about that maybe but who am i to sit in judgment as i say um so then the other thing is just be open to what you see uh what else could i add to this basically just all things in moderation you know there's got to be a purpose for doing uh, things like past life it, you know as with the present life if you spend all your days going back in time trying to take a look at the past then once again you're not living in the present um, but anyway look I'm going to say you know that's the sum of the knowledge and information I'm going to bring to this law I have lots of thoughts that I'm speculating on, but I think probably because they're unclear in my own mind, I probably should keep my own counsel here, so to speak. But 
as always, I'm really interested to hear what you might think. Um, I think this would be a great conversation for if and when we ever get around to doing lives. I think that would be great. But anyway, thank you for being part of my journey. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.